And then just one almighty explosion. The window just disappeared. I mean, there was just shit everywhere, you know, just smoke, dust, rubble. I and mean, we stepped through, like, and there was this thing moving, you know, and it was all to the sim, you know, covered in dust. You know, a few cuts, you know, but um, nothing serious. He was alive, you know. I'm sort of like taking part in a Hollywood movie. Suddenly, there's some sort of invasions happening. The other lads come in, I think one of them actually picked them up. Uh, and he was sort of pushed, you know, told to go to the balcony, you know. And I think the last one just said to me, stay there, don't move, stay, stay where you are. And uh, off they went. Robin is waiting at the back of the building and watches the assault team abseil down the ropes. You can hear noise and commotion going on. And I looked up, and there was Tom hanging from his rope, and he'd got his glove caught in his abseil equipment. The curtains have caught fire from one of the stun grenades that's gone in, and it's caught fire, and the flames are starting to sweep up the window. And you could hear him screaming down the radio. And I looked up, and I thought, well, there's, there's absolutely nothing I could do. And I was thinking, if somebody doesn't cut him down, he's going to burn to death. And the guys on the roof are looking down over the edge at him. But as he pushes himself away from the flames, He's pushing himself beyond the balcony. So if they cut him at the wrong moment, he's actually going to go over the edge of the balcony and drop another 40 feet down of solid concrete. So they're trying to cut the rope and release him as he's on the inswing, which they succeeded in doing and saving his life. Trevor and Salim are still locked in their struggle when Trevor finally decides to draw his revolver. I went, pulled my gun out of the holster and I pointed it to his uh, temple. I thought, I'm going to kill this bastard. He couldn't believe it. Mr. Trevor's got a gun. He was saying, please don't hurt me, Mr. Trevor. It wasn't me, it was the others. I told them what you were saying was true, but they wouldn't listen. They wanted to carry on. And I thought to myself, if I kill him, I would be killing him out of anger and hatred. And uh, that's not the way I've been trained. When the front window was blown in, Mac, Tom and two other team members entered the building. Their orders were to rescue any hostages on the first floor. The drill was that the, the, the first pair in would clear that room and contain that room while we went through and cleared the next room. When we got to the door, we went through the normal drill, opened the door a little bit, threw the flashbang in, closed the door, flashbang goes off and we follow it into the room as fast as you can possibly move. Two of these, what I call green lemons, they were like the anti-personnel grenades they used to carry, came rolling in. And these were the things that dominated and frightened the life out of me all the time I was in there. I thought, good God. I can see Salim going for his gun. And uh, whilst I'm trying to stop him getting his gun, I hear the door fly open. I see Trevor and the terrorists, both armed, wrestling to wrestling with each other. I hit Trevor, get away! And I let go of him and I rolled over to look at the door from where the voice came from. And there he is standing there, this guy who knew me personally as Trevor. And I didn't know him from Adam. And uh, he was dressed in black overalls, mask, had a futuristic looking gun, a balaclava. And as I rolled over, I immediately heard <laughs> And I looked back, and there was Celine laying there, absolutely lifeless. And he had a line of bullet holes going at a diagonal across from his eye, across his chest. I had an MP5 submachine gun in a, a shop. I fired several rounds in a small burst into him. Uh, I believe he would have been dead before he hit the floor. I was in a bit of a state, I was getting stressed up, I couldn't breathe. And then he said, over there, Trevor, to the window. And I climbed over the desk towards a window. 
and uh, touched the window and it just disintegrated. I then leant out, took my hat off and took the biggest lung full of fresh air that I could get hold of. Salim is dead, but there are still five other gunmen to be accounted for. Mac makes for a room on the first floor at the back of the building where he thinks one of them is hiding. Put a smoke grenade in, flashbang, you know, bang, 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 lots of smoke. Uh, we go in, can't find him, but we know he's in there. Up to the door, right, ready, go. In again. So you've got, like, the room, torches come across, and both, both the torches hit the guy at the same time. He's lying there, and that was it. It just... <laughs> and it's bang, bang. Couple of rounds, job done. Do you feel anything as you shoot him? No, nothing. It's, um... Nothing at all. You know, I mean, it's not been hard. Um, it's just, it's part of the job. You've got to shoot. You can't take the chance in, you know, you can't walk up and say, uh, excuse me, mister, whatever your name is, would you mind giving us a weapon? So, you've got to shoot him. Two gunmen are now dead, four still at large. Those outside listen in stunned silence to the mayhem within. Just sat there and listened to the noise and believed that a wholesale massacre was going on. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and hearing. Stunned. And drained, to be blunt. Totally drained. And your feelings? Failure. Failure, mostly. Um, I'd failed because the SAS had gone in. Horror because of what I was hearing. But mostly failure. And uh, a great deal of emotion. It's coming back now. On the second floor, in the telex room, a group of Iranian hostages has been fired on by two of Salim's gunmen. Ali Samazdazei, an embassy official, is killed instantly. Six bullets bite into Ahmed Dadgar. Amazingly, he remains conscious. Dadgar says the hostages then persuade the gunmen to surrender. Weapons are seen being thrown from the window and a white flag appears. Then the SAS enter the room and carry out the most controversial killings of Operation Nimrod. Were the gunmen who were shot by the SAS armed? I don't really know that whether they have gone in their own pockets or nothing, but whatever they had in their hands, they throw on the floor. So did the gunmen surrender? Yes, because both of them were sitting there and put their hands on their own hands. Yes. At the same time, the door opened, and then several SAS men came in. And then they took the two terrorists and pushed on the wall and shot them. That's it. Because they wanted to finish their story. They were going to finish their story, to finish, to kill it. Dadgar's account is confirmed by two other Iranian hostages we've spoken to. They were eyewitnesses in the telex room at the time. The inquest into the killings later found the soldiers had used reasonable force. The coroner delivered a verdict of justifiable homicide. With mayhem inside and the embassy now burning, Sim Harris is still left crouching on the balcony. 